Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We receive that word. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you for your presence in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. We just yield the service to you. We thank you for, for everybody here. We thank you for the viewers as well. And I just want to welcome our, we have a satellite uh, group right now in uh, Paradise, California. We just want to welcome them. And there's other people watching. We welcome you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I tell you, this atmosphere that we're in right now, we're in an atmosphere where anything can happen. How many believe that? Thank you, God. Hallelujah. There's some worshipers in this place, isn't there? Hallelujah. Yeah. We love Jesus. That's right. That's right. We love Jesus. And so I tell you, he's put a message on my heart. Uh, and he told me to call it Stepping into Grace. How many think we need to step into this lifestyle that, of grace, you know, that God has given us? And, uh, yeah. Hallelujah. You know, he put a little something on my heart. Um, I'm just going to share it here. Uh, stepping into grace can bring you to that place where you, where the life you are living is free from disgrace. Amen. How many like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a place of honor. Of wonder and splendor, a place of yielding and total surrender, a place of victory that you can see, a place of fellowship that will set you free. It's the life of Jesus from God's heaven above, given in mercy through the power of his love. God's grace is given so that you might live, you know, as you trust in God's word through the faith that he gives. I tell you, I don't know about you, but we're, we're ready to step into more of this grace. And anybody need a little more grace in this place? A little more revelation? And so, the Lord has told me that He is um, He's calling us up to the He's calling us up to the plate. This is our season. And how many believe that you were born for such a day as this? Amen. And He tells me it's time to be accountable for, for what He has given us. How many believe that we should be accountable for that gift, that there's people that that are are maybe dying out there that that are, are depending on us that we don't even know about, that God wants to take you to, you know, um, and so, you know, we have been given such a precious gift, and um, and this gift is Christ in you, right? The hope of glory, right? Colossians one twenty seven. We're we're touching on that. that this last week and just going to build on it a little bit more. It's burning in my spirit. How many are burning for the Lord here today? Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you, when you start to see this reality of what has been given you, what's in you, not what, it's who, right? Amen. Jesus in you, you know? When you see Jesus, who is the image, hear that, who is the image of the invisible God. It brings you I'm telling you the truth here. We're, we're not just talking about that. It's so powerful that it brings you into the place where your life starts bringing God glory. Hallelujah. You know, you, you start getting a hold of that revelation of the word. That's, you know, the hope of the gospel brings you into that place that has called you to live. You know, and, and, and we can really receive this gift that's been given. How many believe we can live in there all the time? Hallelujah. I tell you, it's so powerful. And, and God wants us to know... That as Jesus is, when we see this, so are we in the world. First John 4, 17. That's how powerful this revelation is. And right now, please hear me. He's looking. His, his eyes are searching the earth. How many believe that? He's looking at our hearts. He's looking at everybody, you know, who, who want to see God, who want to who wanna do something for God. First Chronicles 16, 9 says he's looking Yes. For those in whom he can show himself strong, be happy, you know. And there's something that just happens to you when you see things from God's perspective. How many believe that? You see them from his perspective, it changes. Oh man, let me just let me just give you a little testimony here. Uh, and I'm not trying to draw attention to our ministry, draw attention to, to what Jesus did. He is really amongst us. He is in us. He's with us. The Spirit is here. And I'm telling you, He wants to take us to the place where we're just walking in revival. It just starts breaking out. And, uh, you know, it's starting to happen. 
and we were in a little a little um, meeting, just a little meeting. Revival can break out, right? Yeah, just a little meeting room. It was jammed, jam packed with people. The spirit was was all over it this week. We were so blessed, and uh, and people were getting set free. People were catching fire. I'm talking about real real fire, revival fire. And this one lady, you know, she was not quite sure about me, you know, because, you know, sometimes you don't see the, these things. Unfortunately, the greater one within us starts manifesting. It, it, it's, it's transforming. Well, anyways, this lady comes up. I'm going to ask my wife to come up. Will you come up and help me with this? Yeah. I don't she doesn't want to be on TV yet. Okay. Well, we'll, well, it's coming. The day is coming. Okay. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> that's okay. It's all right. She, could, she was there. This lady came up and she saw what was happening. And she came up on her own, you know, and, and, and she started telling us about her leg. She almost lost her leg. She had some kind of weird uh, thing where her leg actually exploded, she said. And she had a big scar. She showed us part of it. And it was wrapped. She was gimping around in there. She lost uh, feeling in her feet and her toes and they couldn't move. And I tell you, we didn't have to, to pray for her leg. All we did, we just started living the love of God. Uh, you know, we knew He was there. We just started seeing Him, thanking Him for His finished work on the cross. And I'm telling you what, there was something that was beyond us. How many believe that the, there, there's something in you that's beyond what your old nature can see? You know, you get in that realm and God starts showing you things. It, it's transforming. Well, anyways, the Holy Spirit came all over this lady. Wow, I got the fire all over me right now. He came over this lady because she felt this warmth go all through her. And then she said, we didn't even pray for her leg. She says, you know what? My feeling's coming back. I was, oh my gosh. She, she started walking around in there and her leg started bending. It wouldn't bend a certain way. And she took her shoes off and, and her feeling came back and her toes started moving. And she was just, I tell you, what was it? You know, there's a greater one within us. He moves through love. And there's just something about seeing, seeing the love of God, seeing what God wants us to do that, that gives us this ability to be a channel through which he can move through. Does that make sense? Yeah. I tell you, it doesn't have to be for healing. It could be salvation. Uh, maybe the way we talk to our wives. You know, I mean... I tell you, there's times when you need the help from God to talk to, to, to one another. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And, and you just can't do it. you got to just, you know, God wants, wants us to know that he has given us vision. That we can see into this realm. We can step out of our old ability and into his ability. And when we start seeing things from the perspective of God, it changes us. I'm telling you. This is the truth. And and um, how many ever read uh, Proverbs? Proverbs, I'll give you a little example. Proverbs 6, I think. I'm not quite sure where that verse is. But it talks about um, the power of vision. It says, you know, be, beware of harlots, you know. Um, it could be a man harlot, too. Don't get me wrong, you know. Okay? But they can capture you with their eyes. That's what it says. Don't look in their eyes. I think it's Proverbs chapter 6, somewhere in there. If they can catch, capture you with their eyes. And, I mean, if that is the case with darkness, how much more is it with the kingdom? How many believe that? How many, how many believe that if we could just get in that place where God is leading us and we have the inner vision, we're seeing from that realm that's not visible, that when we look... You know, I think God can do stuff to your eyes, you know. Well, don't we belong to Jesus? It, it can change circumstances. That's the truth. And sometimes we pray for people who have a, oppression. And, and there's, there's real spiritual oppression. The Bible says there is. It says, you know, God shows you what he wants you to do. And I'm telling you, when you look into people's eyes, uh, one thing that they don't want to do is look at you. Why? Because there's something in you that's... that's that's radiating out through your eyes. And it will set people free. I'm telling you, this is a big deal. It's a revelation. We need to start letting the Lord show us what he's seeing, what he's doing. Jesus, you know, when he was out there before the multitudes, 
It says his eyes was filled with compassion. And God worked miracles, you know, multiplied fish and loaves and, and fed thousands of people. Wow, right? It's power in, in what we're talking about. And so, in other words, there's this, this greater reality that is in you right now if you've been born again. And, and it's beyond your ability to see, but if you'll just look to him, it will take you out of the old nature, the life that's not of faith, and take you into that realm of faith where you start experiencing this grace that God has given us. How many want to how many, uh, step into more of that? Yeah. And it's a place you can walk in all the time. Hallelujah. And so please, please hear me today. God is... Um, he, he's trying to awaken us, encourage us. If we have been born again, Christ is in you now, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. And when you start to see this, it's so powerful that the revelation of it, you don't have to do anything because it's already been done. The revelation of this grace, this greater one in you, what he has done, what's revealed, what's given in Scripture, will just, it will just start raising you up, you know, into that place where you're seated with Christ, where you're ruling and reigning with life in life with Jesus, right? Where you don't want to live like you used to. You don't, you know, grace, what does grace do? Grace will will, will transform you. It'll put you uh, in, in that place where you you're, you can see God, you can know God. He says, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give uh, these people a new covenant and I'm going to be their God. They're going to be my people. Go read, I think it's Jeremiah 31. It talks about what God has done. Aren't you glad that he saw our estate, that we were helpless, and he reached down, and um, and he's here right now. And how many believe God is good for his word? That when he gave us this word, you know, uh, he gave us his word. There's, there's, there's times, unfortunately, in the world where people give us their word, and it's not the same with God, though, right? And so... We can stand in God's word. And so he, he wants me to start off today by giving you a promise in scripture. If you if you have your 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 Bible, start opening up to Psalms 111, verse 5. And as you're turning there, I just want to say, Psalm 111, verse 5, that this life that has been given is worth dying for and it's worth living for. And we're going to look at some scriptures and some some keys here today we've already started that can really help those who, who want to be used by God, who want to step into grace, experience what God has called us to be, and, and see our destiny fulfilled. You know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try to encourage people to step out of, of, of the old and into the new and start reaching people for God's glory. Hallelujah. So it says here in this verse, He hath given meat unto them that fear Him. I think that's an incredible verse. He will ever be mindful of His covenant. Isn't that great news? He's given meat to those who reverence Him. Wow. Anybody need a little meat? Any, any heavenly manna? Uh, revelations of strength? You know, to endure these things that we're, we're dealing with in, in this realm, he will give those that, that reverence him real meat. And it's strong meat. Wow. Telling you the truth. And, and it comes to those who, please hear me, who respect, honor his covenant, which in our case is grace, right? Yes. It's a covenant of grace, isn't it? That, aren't we to live by grace? It's through his blood, you know, it's because of what he did on the cross, you know. Everyone just say grace, grace. you know, and I'll tell you, I, we need to step into grace. And, uh, and it goes on to say he will always, how long does that mean? Always, forever, remember his covenant. But are we remembering it, you know? Do we really believe it? You know, is our life... Don't get mad at me, okay, today if I hit a, a, a couple nerves here. Is our life reflecting a lifestyle that's faithful or unfaithful? You know, if, you know, if God has given us, you know, a covenant, 
I mean, it's, it, it takes more than one person to be in covenant, right? Yeah. A covenant of grace, then, then we need to realize that it's always there, right? You know, realize that Titus 1 2 says God cannot lie. He cannot lie. Numbers 23 19, we see the words, Hath he not said, and shall he not do it? So it's unconceivable, unbelievable that, do, that our Lord would ever depart from, from this gospel, this, this covenant that he has given us. And it's an awesome thing to step into it and see it. And so, praise the Lord. And so I tell you, more and more I'm discovering, you know, we need to believe that, uh, that, that our God is in covenant with us. We need to remember the covenant. We need to be living in covenant with him as well. And, uh, and he's burning something into my spirit. You know, there are misconceptions on this, on this grace message that's being released in the world today. And I'm not going to hammer on it too, too long today, but, uh, you know, there are, there, there are, there are things that are being released that are hindering so many today from stepping out of, 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 the, of the lifestyle that's not of faith, that's, that's in line with the world, and into this realm of grace. I mean, realize this is a supernatural life, or a, or a spiritual life, I like that word better, a heavenly life. It's beyond your ability, but yet that's what he's called us to live in. He wants to take care of all of our needs. He wants us to walk and see things from his point of view. And we can do it, I'm telling you. And there's things that may be hindering us. And I just want to touch on something. Uh, my heart really is just focused on, on maybe breaking down some barriers that are keeping people from stepping out and stepping into this lifestyle of faith that, that, that brings us into a place where we can actually experience grace. I'm talking about real grace. And uh, how many believe that there really is grace? And hallelujah. We're experiencing it already. Doesn't it say in Ephesians uh, 2.8 that it's by grace that we are saved through faith? So there's something we got to get into, right? And, and that it is not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. And that's so true. When we get the revelation, it's not of ourselves but that we can step out of who we used to be, and we can step into grace, and I mean, it transforms you. I mean, it, it lights you up, you, you start shining for God, right? You, is there anything more fulfilling than serving God? Living by grace? I tell you, there isn't. You won't want to go back the old way, and you want to, you, all you want to do is say, yes, Lord, thank you, show me what you want me to do next, I want to go. And it'll take you into that place beyond your ability, but, but if you'll follow the Lord, things will happen. Impossible things will happen because it's not possible because you're living from that realm where Jesus is, right? Hallelujah. And, and I tell you, we're living in this. We are living in this. We, we are living by faith. Before we even stepped into ministry, we were living by faith where God was just taking care of us and we're just following after him. And I'm telling you, he knows how to take care of you if you'll let him, if you'll step into this realm. He can take you in that place. And I'm just going to give you one example here. Uh, he, called, he called us to start another group in Valley Springs. And um, this is maybe three years now we've been working on this. Maybe four. Okay, we started holding meetings. There was no place to have a, have a church in Valley Springs when he called us to have one. And uh, could that be discourage anybody? You know, if you live by the realm of sight, you're going to miss God. So we just found one close by. Next thing we know, we're inviting people. Nobody shows up. You know, and every once in a while at first, there's a few, but you just keep going. You don't give up. If you've got, if you got uh, the Word of God, you keep going, right? What have we been given? We keep going. You don't give up. Next thing you know, he starts drawing people, and next thing you know, the word starts getting around. Next thing you know, uh oh, he says, I want you to go look for a building now. I got this overwhelming urge to start looking for a, a building, and guess what I found out? One church moved into another place, and there was this open, open building, and we stepped right in, right in the perfect timing. 
I'm telling you. You gotta just go and, and let God establish you. And He can and He'll do it. Maybe it's something else in your case. Maybe it's a different kind of a ministry. Maybe it's a business. I mean, we're all called, you know, by God, right? And He's calling us right now. How many believe He's calling you right now to step into some new things? Praise the Lord. And so you know, this gift is not of ourselves. We've got to step out and step into this lifestyle of grace. And, uh, and when the revelation that it's not of ourselves comes into view, you know, it, it, you're, going to, you're going to just be transformed. And so he has given us this grace. You know, he has given it to us so that we can start living in it now. How many believe we should live in it now and remain in it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so praise the Lord. And and one of the things he's been burdening me about is, um, and this is a message that so many are starting to embrace, and it's very dangerous. And it's 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 it's, it's, it's almost if people are are believing that their lifestyle of of grace doesn't require them to live holy lives. Um, anybody ever you know what I'm talking about? Like it's almost a, life, a, a license to sin. And this is, not, this is not uncommon. We have been dealing with this, running into this doctrine. But whether or not that doctrine is going on out there, what about us? I mean, how, how serious are we about our covenant with God? Have we become a little bit, you know, um, relaxed? And saying, well, I can always repent, you know, and... You know, is that our attitude, or, or, or are we getting serious with God? You know, our attitude should be like Jesus' attitude, right? Yes. I mean, we're in covenant, right? Yes. Thank God for grace; we need it. But it's not to produce a lifestyle that's not of faith. We're, to, we're you know, our our lifestyle of of grace comes through faith, right? Yes. It's a holy life. It's a righteous life. How many believe that? Yes. And so, unfortunately. There are, there are, um, there are teachings that are going out that's dangerous. It's, it, in my view, people is is leading people. Many people are getting on this broad road where they're they're thinking, well, I got saved. That's all I need to do. Yeah. You know, God's in, char in charge, but we got a, we got a responsibility. We need to believe and embrace what God has given us. And um, even though our sins, you know, are covered. We need to repent when we sin. How many believe we need to repent when we sin? Oh yeah. You know, you know, we need to realize that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Right? You know, we're supposed to go from faith to faith. It's not a right, we're supposed to remain in this realm. You can see first John one eight, that's you know, if we if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, the truth is not in us. And so, also realize that if we do confess, what does the word say? He is faithful. And, you know, and, and you may not feel like it. You might, the enemy might be putting a mind trap on you, a game on you, uh, trying to put condemnation on you. But when you do get right with God, it says he cleanses you from all unrighteousness, right? There's power in the blood. Everybody says there's power in the blood. There's power. And so... And so I'm afraid it's a dangerous doctrine, and it's really, you know, it's really um, burning on my heart. The Lord, I really believe the Lord wants us to, to have an attitude of holiness, uh, that when we repent, we really mean it. We really don't want to sin anymore. When you start getting into this realm of grace, you don't want to. You're going to hate sin, you know. You're going to know the difference, right? Yes. You're not going to just make excuses and and. and and, and compromise the word to, you know, to justify the lifestyle of not living by faith. And and that's what's happening. But it says, we touched on this just recently, godly sorrow, 2 Corinthians 7, 10, produces repentance to salvation. That's a big deal. Right? That's part, that's our covenant. Sorrow of the world works repentance unto death. And so... You know, what's working in those who aren't really sincere 
they, they have an attitude maybe of, you know, it's kind of like a light, it's there, you know. I got, I can always repent later. You know, what, what's that going to work in you? Is there consequences for those kinds of things? Yes. There is. I'm telling you the truth. And so, you know, the Lord tells me there really is. I was watching his program this week. He says, go watch Sid Roth. And, and this gentleman started coming on saying, there's an avalanche of false teaching coming upon the church. Not only in grace. It's, there's a lot of issues out there that's covering people up that's taking people down a wide path that leads to destruction and it's capturing people that are new, that are sincere, innocent, and, and it's taking them in, you know, it's perverting things a little bit just enough to keep them from stepping in to this authentic lifestyle of grace that comes through faith. And how sad is that that people are dying? You know, and then they have this guy named Steve Hill on the program who, I tell you, I want to burn for the Lord like that guy does. Go watch it this week. It's, it's Sid Roth and he has Steve Hill on it. And you'll see what I'm saying. I'll just say that. You'll be blessed. But that guy was in tears on, on national TV, crying out. You know, we got to get to the Word. And if, and, and if we're not, you know, in a place where, they're, where they're, they're, they're talking about this like we we're talking about today, run. That's what he was saying. Find a place that believes the word, that lives the word. It's serious. How many believe we're in a, we're in a, a generation? And so, wow. Man, I tell you, I catch a little fire here on this one. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for um, Steve Hill. You know, I don't want to hit too much on this again, but please realize that you can. It is possible under the new covenant to grieve the Holy Spirit. It says in Ephesians, um, you know, 4:30 that you know don't quench, you know, don't grieve. It's possible. How many believe that? Amen. You know, realize Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says, you know, that sin can easily beset us. Yes. It can. Thank God for grace. Yes. We need it, but realize there are there are consequences for not stepping into it. It's not a license to sin. That's not our attitude that we should have. We're, we're called to be holy. First Peter chapter 1, right? Verse 15 and 16. Be, is because it is written, Be holy for I am holy. I mean, when you step into this lifestyle of Jesus, it changes you. You're walking in the light as he's in the light. You're going to be walking in holiness. That's just the truth. We need to be more like Paul, who's, who says in Philippians, you know, uh, that I'm going to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Who, wanna do, who wants to do a little of that? Or a lot of that? <laughs> and I'm telling you something else. That, you know, God has not only given us this covenant, He's not only given us the Word, Jesus, you know, and His blood, but His name. He's given us something to help us, someone called the Holy Spirit. Power that can keep you, that can take you in where you can actually experience. That's part of the role of the Spirit to take you in, transform you, to reveal the life of Christ in you and through you. We see that in Acts chapter 2. He came, you know, and I tell you, it is a life that doesn't have to, to, to uh, grow cold. How many believe that? I mean, you can catch fire and, and you'll never have to grow dim. You can get to, he wants to take you right where you are in the world and just let the Holy Spirit just catch you on fire where it's no longer you, where you're seeing beyond the flesh. You're seeing into that realm, you know, that eternal realm where he passes that knowledge that transforms you, causes you to come into line with his will. It will bring it into operation. How many want to go there and say, yes, Lord, I'll just, we don't know how to get there except by the word. We've got to trust and yield our life to the Lord so He can take us where we're, we're no longer servants of unrighteousness, but servants of righteousness. You can see that in Romans chapter 7, verse uh, uh, 14 and 15, or 13 and 14, I think. And so, so let me be, encourage you today. Maybe somebody's watching here that uh, hasn't received salvation. Maybe you haven't received this baptism of the Holy Spirit. Be open. I'm telling you, we need these things. 
How many need more? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And so this is what he's pouring out. This is why things are starting to spark. You know, why people are catching fire, getting excited about Jesus. It's happening, you know, because he's pouring out his spirit. And people really are. I believe right now he's, he's starting to fan the flame. He's starting to blow on those embers. He's, he's going to light those people on fire. They're going to burn for God's glory. Who will be, you know, who will, you know, who's willing to do that? And so, wow, realize that he wants to start a fire. He's called me to, to start fires, to preach revival. How many believe that we can get into that realm right now? That's what he said in Luke 12, 49, I've come to send fire on the earth. Wow. He says in Acts 1, 4, he commanded his, his disciples, wait, you know, don't leave Jerusalem till you be endued with power, right? Wait for the promise. Excuse me, that was Acts 1, 8. But wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard of me. For John baptizes with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. That's the same baptism that John talked about in Luke 3 16 that's to come through Jesus you know he's going to he's going to put his spirit on you he's going to light you up and you're going to you're going to reflect the glory the the you know that you're going to be walking in that heavenly reality in the in the realm of the earth and people are going to they're going to, they're going to be drawn you know something's going to happen it's going to change things I think it was this guy named Leonard Reven, Ravenhill anybody ever hear that guy yes he says, you know, God will light you on fire and people will come and watch you burn. You know, you want to see people come to the kingdom? This cat's a fire, okay? And so, I'm telling you, this is the same baptism he wants us all to have. And he wants, you know, if we, we might have it, but how many are burning for the Lord? And so, the world's desiring for this revival to come. I tell you, what is true revival? True revival is, is Jesus Christ living in you that's true revival that's that's you know praise the lord and so this is a big deal why has the fire grown dim in this country you know what is it that has gotten in the way that that, that that's obscured that's quenched the flames of revival that should never burn out i tell you under the old covenant leviticus 6 13 it says it was never to go out how much more in the new one, right? Oh yeah, and so yeah, and so we need to we need to have this, and, and he's, he's he's fanning the flames right now. So praise the Lord. So, um, hallelujah. So the Lord's telling me to just you know throw this out here today. I mean, where are the ones you know who are going to be a burning and a shining lamp? to this generation like John the Baptist. We're the ones that are going to start turning the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the father. Where are they in this generation? You know, we're, we're, who's heart, you know, where are the ones who are going to be like Peter, who are going to just catch this fire and start preaching with the force of God's love that, that brings the Holy Spirit on this, on this scene that causes people to become pricked in their hearts to the point where they say, well, what do we got to do? You know, we want what you have. Where are those preachers at? You know, where, where are the where are the people that are going to pray revival in? Yeah. People of prayer. You know, where are the Evan Roberts for this generation that, that helps spark? Any Evan Robert type of yeah. people in here? Hallelujah. 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 We're going to pray revival in, right? Yeah. Where are the ones who are going to stand in the gap and bridge the gap and be watchmen on the wall? You know, the intercessors. Yeah. Where are the ones who are going to be like Paul? Who's going to preach the gospel? Who's going to talk about the cross? Who, who's there? They're not going to be looking at the temple realm. They're not going to want to look at it because they're going to be consumed in this fire. All they're going to want to see is Jesus and him crucified so that, so that they can preach and bring a demonstration of power that really makes a difference. Where are those Amen. ministers, those believers? Yes. You are the ones. Yes. People watching, you are the ones he's raising up. He's calling right. 
And he's going to light everybody up who will be lit up. Amen. Amen. Jesus. And they're coming. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this is what I'm telling you, Christ in us, there's only one result. If we are living from that reality, revival. Amen. You're going to start to see the same thing that he did operate in you. Why? Because we're joined with him. Because it's the same spirit. We have the same spirit. Doesn't it say there's one faith, one one baptism, one Father, God in all who is through all and above us all? Absolutely. And we are joined together with our Lord. And so this is what he's taken us into. And and this revelation is is tremendous. It's beyond what we can see here in the temple realm. We've got to step out. We can't, can't look at our problems. And it will, it, you know, it's not to draw attention to self. It's to... It's to draw people into more of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. That's what the world needs to see. He's calling us to bring that with us. And, uh, but a lot of people aren't too sure about this faith. You know, this, this, they, they say that, you know, they see that it says we're saved, but they're afraid to step out because they don't understand. They might not feel adequate. They may not feel like they can step into this righteousness, but that's, doesn't that say in the scripture, in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, that he was made sin who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of, 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 of God in Christ Jesus, right? Does it, doesn't it say that? Do we believe that? Oh, yeah. And, you know, in, 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 in spite of what we see on the outside, how we may feel, there's something inside you that's growing. That, that's, that, that is exceeding greater and above and beyond. And the revelation of, of this person that's in you transforms you. Who you are in Christ transforms you. It causes you uh, to, 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 to realize that you can believe all things. You can step into you know, these works, these finished works of the cross. Just like we were talking about that lady in Starbucks, she got healed. We can give you several examples of people giving, getting healed. We're getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. Getting saved. Praise the Lord. Lots of people. A lady gave testimony this morning. Last week she got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And she is, her whole life is being transformed. In other words, there's a there's a spirit inside her that her, her natural mind doesn't understand. It's part of our inheritance. It's part of our grace. And it's transformed her. She went to visit another church. She started breaking out tongues. She couldn't stop it. I mean, yeah. We saw a young guy last night. Wow, Ooh, the fire's in here. Last night, a young guy, a, a teenager, 14 years old, he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. He said, oh man, I feel plans. It was like, it, it, it didn't make sense to him, but yet there was a greater reality in him. And man, I tell you, you watch that kid after he got baptized in the Holy Spirit, he was praying. Oh yeah, he, he was up there praying for all these people. He was a believer. I want believers praying for me. I don't know about you, right? Yeah. And so I tell you, when we get going with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit, with you know, uh, we can do things, you know, because of Him, what He's done. And so, because people don't quite understand this, you know, they they are afraid to step out. They're afraid to reach out, step into this realm of grace that comes into operation through faith. But just know that God has given us the Holy Spirit. He's given us the anointing. It says in chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, He'll give you options. He'll prompt you. He's not going to show you the whole thing. He shows you these things as you go. So whether you realize it mentally or not, Spiritually speaking, you lack nothing. Ephesians 1 3 says, our, our Heavenly Father has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. It's there now. You can step into this, this grace that God has given us now and remain in there and live there and prosper and be in health. And I mean, it is an exciting life, superior life, but it's not going to make sense to the old nature. You're going to have to abandon who you used to be. You're going to have to lose your life to find your life in Him. Amen. How many is willing to do that? Amen. Hallelujah. And so it's His love that brings this greater knowledge into view. And it transforms. And uh, 
And so everything I'm saying today, you know, I'm trying to say with everybody in mind, you know, because scripture reveals that we're all joined together, you know, one spirit. Doesn't, doesn't it say that? What we see in scripture, the things that Jesus did, he did it so that you could step into it. You see your brothers and sisters doing things that are beyond, uh, you know, the, the, the natural ability of man. You know, he wants you to realize that, the, you know, they did it. You can do it as well. And but so many people are are becoming discouraged because for whatever reason, you know, they, they, they give up. But don't give up. How many believe that we, we can't give up? I know some people that were on fire. But they, they compromise. They've allowed things to come in, and it's, it's cloaked them, and they're not even believing in some of this stuff anymore. And it's sad. They're, they're, they're not. I mean, that is sad. And that's because of misconceptions, you know. People giving up. I mean, we, God cannot lie. I don't care. It takes uh, 20 years before you start seeing somebody get saved. If you get one saved, praise the Lord. At least you're trying, right? I didn't see anything for a while in the beginning, you know, but I just kept going, just kept going and going. Next thing you know, I actually got, saw somebody receive Jesus, you know, and, and, and he's, he's calling us into the healing ministry, deliverance, and all these things. I'm telling you, if Billy Graham would have gave up because he didn't see anything, you know, what would have happened to all those millions of souls? I mean, there was something in that brother that was beyond the, the natural ability of man. What was it? It was the Word of God. It was Christ in him. Dr. Coleman is another example. Think of her. You know, what was it that drew those thousands into stadiums? Some of you remember her. You know, that worked those miraculous healings. I mean, they had doctors there verifying things on the spot. What was it that, 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 that you know, was coming out of her it was beyond, uh, you know, who she was. She says, hey, I am nobody special. I have no special gifts or talents. If anybody can walk in what I'm walking in, if they'll just pay the price. If we'll just pick up our cross and follow. Be a disciple, a true disciple. I'm telling you, God will take you into that place. It didn't start off that way. I've studied her life. It started off not that way, you know, but she was faithful. You know, she was in covenant with God. Look what he did with her. You know, what can he do with us? We all have various gifts and talents and callings, you know. Some of us are called to reach millions, and some of us are 20 or 30. It just doesn't matter, right? It's just we do what he calls us to do. And it's going to be beyond your ability. But you've got to be willing to, to step out of the comfort zone and step into grace. Hallelujah. And so, I tell you, these are just a few examples, but Jesus is the ultimate example of what we're talking about. I want to look at this as we start to wind down here today. And uh, turn to uh, John chapter 7, verse 15. Does this stir in anybody today a little bit? Amen. You know, Jesus had, had who was in, in him? The Father, right? Who's in you? Christ, right? You've been born again. Jesus, the hope of glory is inside you right now. And here it says in verse 15 that the Jews marveled. Hear that? They marveled. I mean, it's bewildered. It's beyond. They don't understand. It doesn't equate to the natural. It doesn't make sense. You know, saying, how knows this man letters having never learned? I mean, there were, there were things coming out of this this our Savior, our Savior, that were beyond. Their wisdom that was beyond his years. And how, how did it, where did it come from? Not only was his, his doctrine different, but his doctrine, it came with power. He would speak, and the force of God, of faith would come into operation. Love and power would, would raise the dead, heal people, work miracles, you know? I mean, they, they, I tell you, this morning, you should have seen what happened. This young gal, she came into our meeting, we never met her before, and, and we're just letting the Spirit demonstrate this reality. We just had her come up, and guess what? This guy's knees got healed. The pain left him right there on the spot. Amen. Because she's learned, she, you know, we're telling her how to step out 
of, of who we used to be and just believe there's a greater one within us. Lay hands and believe. We don't even have to pray. Just give thanks for the finished work of the cross. Jesus says, this is how you work miracles. He told his disciples, believe on him whom the Father sent. And it will, it will operate. It will operate in you and through you. How many believe that? Amen. Last week right here in this room, it was happening to some young ladies. And, and uh, I mean, God was just moving in here. I'm telling you, there is a greater one within you. He can give you revelation, you know, bring you in your destiny, transform you. You've got to yield your life to it. And here, Jesus said in verse 15, my doctrine is not mine. <coughs> That's amazing, huh? Over and over in Scripture, you see that he was, he came to this, this earth as a man. To, to demonstrate the way in to the kingdom, to, to be in right relationship with the Lord, Father, and he was our ultimate example to follow after. He says, you know, um, verse 16, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Wow, there's a key. That's how this revelation came. How many believe that could happen to you? How many believe that we've been sent? Oh yeah, before he, he, he went into the glory, into the clouds, he says this, you know, behold, I'm sending you, you know, as the Father sends me, I send you. And you can see that in, in uh, John 17, we are sent, right? And he doesn't send us empty-handed. When he sends us, he is, we are sent even as he is sent. Isn't that the truth? We, are we ambassadors? Aren't we sent with authority in his name? Praise the Lord. And that's a powerful kingdom, right? And he goes on to say, if any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine. Just get a hold of God's will. You're going to know the word. You're not going to know the whole thing right before, usually. That's been my experience. But if you'll step into his will, the words will flow. How many know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, you start to come into life then. That's a big deal. <coughs> and so you shall know... The doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. How many believe that? Yeah. Well, I tell you, he that speaks of himself seeks his own glory. So what is happening if we're not stepping into this realm of grace and we're speaking, you know, apart from that realm of faith? Whose glory are we seeking? I mean, I won't go there, but just let that word impact you, you know? God called on us all. And, and, but it goes on to say that, um, but he that seeks his glory that sent him, the same is true and no unrighteousness that is in him. And so this is, this is the, the, the high mark God is calling us all into. And my point is, is God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the call. You know, you know when he puts something on you, you just need to step into it. Embrace it. Believe that he's with you. you know, that he is a covenant keeping God, right? And if you miss it, you just miss it. That's all right. Get back up and keep going. Don't give up. And that's that's a key right there. And so, praise the Lord. Is this stirring anybody today? Man, I'm catching some fire here. Praise the Lord. I think I'm going to close, uh, just start winding down here. And I want to um, encourage you today. Number one, just don't give up no matter what. If you don't see it, you don't feel it, doesn't matter. God's word is God's word. You know, your feelings will catch up afterwards. It says, you know, these signs follow those who believe in, in Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. You know, you, you can be baptized. You can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That's what it says. People, there are signs that follow you. You don't have to follow after them. They'll follow you. We saw signs and wonders in Starbucks. I mean, this one lady was just, you know, the enemy was just trying to hinder her. Anybody that steps in faith will know you're going to be, it's on. You know, you're going to be in some spiritual warfare. God just touched this one gal, and she was, you know, going for it, you know, praying and being the intercessor. God set her free. And then guess what happened after that? This glory started get her face got all shiny right there in the room. I, it was her back, her whole face was shining. 
It would, you know, what was it? It was an outward sign of an of a inward reality. Christ was working in us and through us, and he was letting uh, her know that he was real. And she was blessed. And it didn't draw attention to us. It brought glory to him. I'm telling you, we, we're seeing all kinds of things happen. And so it's always to, is to build and to edify and establish the kingdom. But I want to encourage you today, if, if things aren't going the way they should be, if you're getting tired of, of living life, you know, it's just mundane, you know, and, and this is, you know, you, you're not satisfied. I want to encourage you to quit putting your attention off on the, on the, on the, on the things of the world and put them on Jesus. Put them on Jesus. And then all of a sudden, you're going to start seeing this greater revelation, this knowledge that's above us, you know, uh, come into view. And if you'll just step into it, you'll be transformed. And let's close with a couple of verses. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. Hallelujah. How many believe that Jesus is in you now? That he wants out right now? Yeah. I know this message is kind of intense, but we got we got to get on that narrow road and go, right? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so even if it gets a little hot, right? If we have to go through some things, we've been touching on that. But here's what Paul says here. He says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Oh, yeah, it is so worth it. It's going to work in you. How many want to see that? While we not, we look not, hear this, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. God's just looking right now. He, all you got to do is just look to him and just want to say, God, I want to serve you. I want to, I want to, I'll do whatever you, 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 you call me to do. But don't be a person that says, God, I'll do this, and then look around, and maybe he'll show you somebody who you hate. You know, remember, when he saves us, he's supposed to reconcile us to God and to one another, right? There's another law to love one another. You know, realize he put that in you, and we need to just, we can't let that stop us, you know. We've got to walk in love, Right? We need to let this power that's above our ability, uh, that's hindering, that's dividing people, to, 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 to transform us. When you see God's love, his compassion for a brother that you don't like or a sister, what are you going to do? You're going to go over and make peace. You're going to start loving on him because he died for that person. Jesus is in them as well, right? Don't say, I'm going to pray for you. If, if somebody's before you, please hear me. You know, and, and, and to say, God, I'm going to pray for this guy, you know, or this lady. Please help them. You know, they need help. You know, send somebody. Send your spirit. Don't lose sight of the reason why he put Jesus in you. Who has Jesus in you? Amen. Yeah. Jesus. And isn't the Holy Spirit there as well? Thank you, Lord. you know, he's saying, get up. I'm sending you. You know, go do something. And he'll tell you what to do. You know, I'm not saying that he won't use others as well, but you get my point. And uh, I tell you, those walls will come down. You'll step into this super, this spiritual, heavenly uh, realm of, 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 of a covenant with God. It will consume you. He's a consuming fire. It will transform you. Your life will take on meaning and purpose. And all you want to do is just go with God. And, and who's ready to say, I'm going to go with God? And so praise the Lord. That's, I'm, I think I'm going to close there. I want to thank everybody for coming out today. And I just want to encourage you. He is here. He's a God that cannot lie. He'll show you. He'll guide you through his word. Find out what the word says. He'll, show, he'll guide you with his spirit. And you'll have impressions. He'll, he'll give you direction. He's a good God. He's a covenant-keeping God. And so we have no reason to get discouraged because we have the good news. Right? We get to shine the good news out everywhere we go. So, Lord, we thank you. We pray that your revelation, your grace uh, with, with, on this message would just impact people here, people watching, uh, that they would not be the same, but they would be, you know, determined to, to, to go in 
and and bring you know uh, bring you the reward for what you did on the cross. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus. And I want to say thank you for the people of Newland. We're going to tune off uh, right now, but uh, um, you know God bless you, and we'll see you soon. Amen. Hallelujah.